Hi everyone, I'm Sheriff Mark Hackle. Just want to talk uh, briefly about an incident that occurred um, earlier this month. It was a situation that was very tragic. Um, an individual took the life of Dorothy Cizik, somebody that was well known to the community. And uh, in this particular situation, I know it's drawn some concern amongst some of the residents as to, I guess, how to, how to deal with these type of uh, situations and how to make sure that they don't become victimized. Uh, I think what people really need to recognize or understand is this wasn't a random act. This was somebody that befriended Dorothy and in this particular situation took advantage of her, uh, took advantage of her to the extent that he actually took her life. What we were able to do in this particular situation through the investigation is uh, make sure that uh, we found who was accountable for taking Dorothy's life and uh, again go backwards in time to figure out exactly how he committed this crime. And briefly I'll explain that to you. And again there has been some information out in the media and sometimes within the community people will talk about it and try to I guess figure out exactly what took place. So I'm here today just to kind of give you a little bit better insight as to what did happen. Um, it, was, uh, it actually took place on a Saturday uh, we believe sometime in the afternoon. Uh, what we found that uh, Timothy Prince was uh, an individual who lived across the street from Dorothy. Uh, for some reason he befriended her and was able to get rides from her to different locations. Uh, what we believe happened is at some point in time during the day he uh, actually cut the phone lines to the house, was able to convince her to get into her vehicle uh, which was a, a pickup truck and uh, we don't know exactly when or how and I got to be very careful as to some of the details that I give. Uh, but at some point in time, uh, he did take her life. And uh, in this situation, he drove her to a remote area, which was off Coon Creek Road, just north of 33 Mile Road. The Orchard Trails uh, uh, Trail Hike uh, bike path uh, is where he ended up uh, disposing of her body. Uh, this was all unknown to us. Uh, the only thing we were able to make a determination was that her vehicle uh, on Saturday evening was uh, set afire. And uh, it was on 32 Mile Road, maybe about a quarter mile away from her home, just east of the home. Well, we found that to be somewhat suspicious, uh, attempted to contact the home, contact Dorothy, were unable to do so. And so what we ended up doing the next day, which, uh, which was Sunday, uh, we got uh, contacted by the family members that Dorothy was in fact missing, she was not home, and there were some unusual circumstances surrounding her being missing, things that she would have taken with her had she have left, and then obviously uh, some things that, uh, uh, that were no longer present at the home. Um, we recognized that the uh, fire uh, was not an accident. We had our arson investigators out there. They did make a determination that it was uh, intentionally set on fire. And so we then started talking to some of the neighbors, some of their family and relatives, and uh, immediately became somewhat suspicious of uh, Timothy Prince. And in talking to him, he was not very cooperative. Uh, some of the things he did say early on were somewhat suspect. And uh, in, that, uh, in that conversations, we recognized that he had several warrants out for his arrest. So we were able to detain him by bringing him into the uh, sheriff's office uh, that Sunday afternoon and uh, held him um, actually in the uh, county jail while we continued to search for Dorothy um, as well as uh, attempt to find out what took place here. Um, on Monday afternoon, approximately 4 o'clock, a citizen, a bicyclist who happened to be exercising out on the uh, Orchard Trail uh, path uh, did notice what he believed to be a female um, in, the, uh, in the area, the general vicinity of uh, Coon Creek and 33 Mile Road and brought it to our attention by dialing 911. That information uh, proved to be um, a very uh, valuable to us in law enforcement because the description he gave uh, was that of the uh, missing female we were looking for at that time, uh, that being Dorothy. Uh, we did recover her body at the time. That became a, uh, a crime scene. So we processed it and found some evidence that led us to believe that uh, uh, Mr. Prince was in fact um, one of the people that may have been involved in this particular uh, homicide. In further questioning him, he uh, refused to talk to us, wanted to have an attorney present. Uh, we allowed him that opportunity. He has a constitutional right to that. So we continued on with the investigation. We were able to uncover several pieces of uh, uh, clothing, um, other items that uh, we were able to track back uh, to Mr. Prince. And uh, as a result, we were able to go ahead and uh, seek a warrant, a five count warrant uh, for the felonies on this warrant um, were for uh, life felonies and uh, one was for a four year felony. Uh, we passed on the information to the prosecutor's office. Uh, they are going to be handling this case from this point forward. I'm very confident that the prosecutor here in Macomb County, Eric Smith, uh, is going to be able to uh, get a conviction based upon the information and uh, make sure that Mr. Prince has a fair trial. Um, we just want to make sure that people understand that this was not a random act of violence. 
this was somebody that befriended Dorothy, and that's something you need to be somewhat concerned about, making sure the people that you have contact with, why they want to associate with you, are they people that are trying to be helpful to you, or somebody who's just trying to uh, drain you of your resources or your time, your energy. And uh, in this situation, I think the family was somewhat concerned about this relationship and uh, you know, what uh, Mr. Prince's uh, intentions were. And uh, they were able to try to convince him to stay away from her, leave her alone, but unfortunately, uh, his actions were extremely aggressive to the point where he actually took her life. Uh, you need to realize or recognize that if you live alone, uh, that you are concerned. Anybody that you talk to, that you have friendships with, or that are looking for your time and your energy, that you share that information with others, somebody who's close to you, a friend, a family relative, and making sure that people know who the people are you're contacting. And if somebody becomes suspicious to you uh, or uh, concerning to you, you need to make sure you cut off that relationship. Um, again, leaving your doors open at night is not a good thing. Uh, we don't believe that uh, this was a situation where you know, he came into her house at night uh, unannounced, uh, didn't know who she was. That's not the situation at all that did, uh, did occur here. But the public was very supportive in this particular investigation without even recognizing it. They knew something was suspicious. Uh, the person who was uh, biking on the trail, providing us the information because of what he had seen, uh, led us to her body, which uh, helps provide closure for her family. Anytime there's somebody missing, the biggest concern is, are we, able gonna, are we ever going to be able to find this person? And in that particular situation, the body itself um, became a crime scene, which there's a lot of evidence that, are to, that is to be recovered. So recovering uh, Dorothy in that, uh, in that short fashion really did help us a lot with the investigation. So uh, we got to be thankful to the, uh, the bicyclist that did help us and provide the information, eyewitnesses that can help us uh, and have helped us, uh, identify uh, Mr. Prince uh, during that night when the fire was set to Dorothy's car, as well as other uh, witnesses that uh, helped find some of the uh, items of clothing. So we in law enforcement appreciate the support from the public. Um, again, it helps us out with these type of investigations. We've had, a, we've had several up in this north end that we've had to deal with, and again, uh, every one of them uh, had some support and connections with the public in helping us. But what you need to do is just uh, be cautious and be concerned you know, about your own safety and your own welfare. Uh, this is not one of those incidents that uh, people can look back on and think, you know, it was just a random act, as I mentioned before, it's not. But yet, there is still a potential or possibility that something like that could happen. So you need to take the extra steps to make sure that you're safe, be alert, be aware of what's going on. And if you see something suspicious, as we always try to tell uh, uh, people within a community, dial 911 if something just doesn't look right. If you have that inkling that something just doesn't feel good or feel right, uh, whether it's a, a vehicle in and around your neighborhood, a suspicious person, 99% uh, of the time you're right. Something isn't right. And uh, please don't be afraid to make that call. Just pick up the phone, dial 911, and we'll make sure that somebody responds, whether it's Macomb County Sheriff's Department, the State Police, or one of the other local uh, police agencies up in this area that support us uh, uh, quite frequently. So on that note, um, if you can, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to call on our, de our department uh, for assistance in the future if you happen to see or recognize something that's suspicious to you. Thank you very much.